It's Sunday morning on CBS, and here again is Charles Kirolt. Mozart wrote an opera, The Magic Flute. To me, all flutes are magical. Certainly the one Eugenia Zuckerman plays is. Which means that the place from which flutes come must be not so much a flute works as a magic factory. Let us go now with Eugenia out among flute players and flute fanciers and flute makers. More than 2,000 years ago, a Greek philosopher declared, the sound of the flute will cure epilepsy and sciatic gout. It may not work medical miracles, but there's no denying that the flute, that ancient, mythical, magical instrument, is the most popular wind instrument in the country today. There are some one million flute players in the United States. That includes other members of the flute family. And quite a few of them showed up at the last convention of the National Flute Association in San Diego, California. There was a lot of flute playing, as you'd expect. As a stepping stone. And there were master classes. These lower notes, when they're followed by an upper note, you can commit murder on the low note, and nobody noticed... This one conducted by Dorio Anthony Dwyer, principal flute of the Boston Symphony Orchestra. It will fit the RMI, but you've got to be sure that's what you want, okay. because if you want a 16 head in there... And as you would also expect, flute makers pitching their instrument. Has a, uh, this has a smaller... Uh, Some 200,000 flutes are sold in the U.S. each year. Not unexpectedly, the Japanese have entered the market. Five flute manufacturers in this country. One of them just celebrated its hundredth birthday, the William S. Haynes Company. I like this very much. This is like a very it? rich song. Everybody likes this. I wish I had. Its mine. owner and president is this man, Louis DeVoe, who started working at Haynes when he was 16 years old. It's our hundredth year. Hundredth? Your hundredth year? It's our, our hundredth year. Well, congratulations. Thank you. When you were that 16-year-old boy and came to Haynes, did you love music? Did you play the flute? I didn't know what a flute looked like. I really, I just wanted the job. In 1941, it was still depression before the war. And I just wanted to go to work. Since 1888, the Boston-based Haynes Company has been making top-of-the-line, handcrafted flutes that have long been considered among the best in the world. Fortune magazine included the Haynes flute in a list of 100 items America makes best. So would you say that these are the, the, the basics of flute making, right? The basics. Uh -huh. Like that's the gold tool. Are these? Over 330 pieces make up their standard silver flute. Except for that basic tube, every piece is fabricated there. Tone holes, posts, pads, springs, rocker arms, keys. If the machinery doesn't look high-tech, it's new enough for DeVoe. Even this 90-year-old drop forge that hammers out the keys. The keys come out, we feel, much better with this drop forge than it would with a hydraulic press. Hydraulic press would come down and make it in one stamp. But it's much better this way. When we keep hammering it, it makes a hard key. And, and it less have to break. It takes about 130 hours to build and assemble the Haynes standard silver flute. There are machines that could knock out the parts in half the time. Yes, and there's companies that do that. 
and, and they end up as a student flu. They manufacture 100,000 flutes in a year. But they're not handmade and, and they don't last. Our flutes last a lifetime. The Haynes flute is for the serious player, for the professional flutist. Jean-Pierre Rampal plays a Haynes gold flute. And so does jazz musician Lou Tabakin who came to find a replacement for one that was stolen. There was something about the sound that was very appealing to me, even though I'm a quote-unquote jazz player. So if the sound is not uh, appealing to me, it's very difficult for me to improvise. The sound gives me the, the direction, gives me the, generates the ideas. Especially the Haynes Gold Flute to me is just, uh, very rich and warm and ins inspires me to play uh, higher level music. I say it's the best flute produced in the entire world. John Pierney, known as JP, might have some bias. He's been making flutes at Haynes for more than 60 years. It takes quite a few years before a man is capable of making a whole flute by himself. And it's just like fly, filing a key. You got to shape up a key. It's just like Michelangelo. The only difference between Michelangelo, he used the brush, we got to file. Doing a good job, Matt. This is an apprenticeship. I just stumbled on the job. I consider myself lucky to work here. Nathaniel Green started at Haynes one year ago. I have a heritage in my family of architecture and um, furniture making. And although this isn't, it's comparable to that, it is old world craftsmanship, which they're doing here. And that's why I chose to do it. You have to be uh, a little bit of a, of a perfectionist to do this. Craig Stevenson. Yeah. It has to be a, par a part of you before you come here. If, if you're not like that, you just can't really do it. Every flute is tested. How do you test a flute? David Whalen's. It's always some combination of how it sounds and how it feels. Uh, what I do when I check over a flute is the very first thing is the action and that's well the body all the keys really your standard is enormously high here is there a way in which excellence is fostered at Haynes when they work on a piece if it isn't quite correct if there's a little thing wrong with a very small thing we take it and destroy it. Every piece they work on has to be perfect. This is the way I learned how to do it. Whatever I did, I did the best I could. We don't want to grind them out. We just make a choice few for the professional flutist. We don't want to make 100,000 flutes. 